being a public health man i have selected a topic which is concerning public health what i'll be covering in the next half an hour or so will be tracing the progress of public health in india from the spanish flu to the current pandemic as you can see what has changed in india between the pandemics we have seen that public health evolved from 1918 to the present day we will be giving i will be giving you a snapshot of india's health system performance its achievements which are huge and some challenges and then we will be looking at a road map for getting better that is a health system for the 21st century which should have better health financing service delivery and public health now when the britishers were here we had an abysmal <coughs> uh, survival rate that is uh, the life expectancy of indian was woefully inadequate in 1918 we used to have the frequent plague outbreaks in 1890 and in fact so much that it led to rioting in a large number of provinces finally the colonial government was forced to undertake urban sanitary reforms and then came the 1897 epidemic diseases act the indian medical services was created in 19 in 1896 but the focus remained only on soldiers health and ensuring hygiene in and around cantonments and this was also not without bias if you go to old cantonments like merit and ambala still people call there was a kali paltan area and a non kali paltan area which means the worst of hygiene in the cantonments was left for the native soldiers whereas the britishers enjoyed the best of public health and and if you look at the civilian natives they were essentially out of the ambit of public health spanish spanish flu during this time entered bombay in 1918 and it is called as a thief which entered in the night and imagine our population was not so much as it's today we lost due to the spanish flu almost 1.4 crore indians which was one third of the global deaths so much so that it got reflected in the census and in 1921 census the population of india actually dipped which is known as the great divide so such was the devastation that was left by the spanish influenza in india however indians have always been resilient and in fact the flu pandemic was seen as an opportunity by some to evoke community participation in health philanthropy voluntary organizations sprang up in the state of neglect some prominent industrialists participated in relief a large number of ngos were formed complementing government efforts community hospitals were set up and healthcare delivery for the first time was decentralized and in a federal structure the health sanitation and vital statistics were transferred to the provinces in 1990 but the good thing again was the british administration's apathy towards public health fostered a revolt against the government and an anti colonial sentiment was building up thereafter capacity building for public health commenced the school of tropical medicine was established in 1922 at calcutta and for the first time so far we are only looking at curative health we shifted from curative school of thought to public health school of thought and formal public health activities were backed by physicians who were who had dual responsibility clinical as well as public health and you can see today even you have the <clears throat> the medical officer of health in a large number of state district bodies whose job is to integrate clinical and public health 
the public health force comprised of a large number of paramedical workers and sanitary assistants a landmark public health institution was created in december 1932 which is still regarded as a very great uh, body the all india institute of public health, hygiene and public health at uh, calcutta and a few legislations were introduced gradually india went away towards coming close to 1947 when we achieved independence here credit must go to a british gentleman sir joseph bohr who then was made member of the health survey and development committee and was appointed in 1943 his document was a masterpiece and laid the foundation for most of the public health systems in india which have been subsequently reinforced reenergized and his first agenda was that we need to integrate preventive and curative health they cannot exist in different silos there were primary health center development in two stages and training in preventive and social medicine was introduced his plan which is still followed is a primary health center for a 40000 population community health centers district hospitals etc etc essentially a three tier system with referrals at every level until it reaches the apex our own constitution article 47 uh, we knew the importance of public health and we made a provision for that the final merger was when the office of the dg indian medical services and public health commissioner was merged and made the dghs a one point administrative head for both preventive and curative services we have over a period of time come a long way as an independent country and we need to celebrate public health if you see as far as the evolution of public health is concerned we had large number of five year plans we had the mudliyar chadda mukherji and jangalwala committees who built on the bhor committee then we found that uh, we had a large workforce who needed occupational health legislation in the form of the esi act and the factories act we started vertical communicable diseases program like the national malaria eradication program and the national leprosy control program and india is the credited in the world being the first country to understand the importance of family planning and we were the first country which had a national level family planning program we followed the almata declaration the principles in the primary health care approach because we were signatories to that and we followed all their guidelines the integration of the health services then took place and a landmark legislation which has been acknowledged world around was the mtp act 1971 cutting across all lines india had india realized that we had a huge maternal mortality because a large number of our women had to undergo abortions at unauthorized centers with untrained dyes and as a result a lot of septic abortions were there and a lot of um, mothers lost their lives during that so this legislation practically allowed mtp firstly on demand and secondly made institutional availables recognized by the government to carry out the mtp india is credited for being a great uh, though a developing nation for taking this great step which brought about a drastic reduction in septic abortions and as a result maternal mortality we created a good multi purpose cadre and of course uh, then came the emergency and some forced sterilizations uh, put the national population control program on the back foot for some time and made us understand that essentially we have to improve our child survival and uh, maternal survival because once we assure the population that their children will survive and do well family planning will be taken up voluntarily by the populace therefore the target oriented approach which had gone into disrepute was replaced by the community needs assessment approach to improve the nutritional health of our children we had the midday meal program 
we strengthened the maternity and child health services and we launched the rch1 and the rch2 program thereafter we had various national population policies the national rural health mission in 2005 which was merged with the urban health mission and called the national health mission 2013 now we have healthcare under the pmj scheme and we graduated from millennium development goals to sustainable million to sustainable development goals so if you see over a period of time uh, the public health in india definitely evolved preventive services curative services reproductive child health services legislation occupational health you name it we have come a long long distance from where we were at the time of independence we did have major breakthroughs in communicable diseases control landmarks eradication of smallpox the surveillance containment strategy vaccination of large number of people demonstrated our capacity to mount and implement a large scale health intervention and we were certified on 23rd april 1977 as a smallpox free country which is no mean achievement for a developing nation and now we don't have to vaccinate children for smallpox polio eradication a great feather in the cap of public health in india from a country in 2009 which had 60% of the global cases 27 march 14 we were declared polio free so here we see and we have built on a large amount of our capacity in vaccination and the fact that we could maintain cold chains with vaccine vial monitor and vaccine carriers this advantage that india had achieved of polio eradication was leveraged when we provided cold chain for the current covid vaccination programs we knew we had the confidence to do it and we are doing it we combat, you know if you see the history of the kum mela in india which was there every 4 years it was very closely linked with cholera cholera prevalence reason poor hygiene and sanitation so every 4 years when this largest congregation of the world uh, congregated in any of our cities cholera came back with a vengeance and a lot of lives were taken we recently had uh, the cholera we had recently had the <coughs> kumbh mela with huge amount of participation in up but the focus on safe drinking water hygiene and sanitation and hand washing and of course ors ensured that we had no cases of cholera and diarrheal diseases are under control so now we have made the kum mela uh, held the kum mela with safety and without with negligible mortality and mortality the public health burden of vector borne diseases malaria at independence we had 75 million cases now we have managed to reduce malaria by 50% and deaths by 2/3 and the funding for the national vector borne disease control program has been enhanced we have had some major ambitious initiatives to control tb the revised national tuberculosis control program popularly known as the dots program where an individual comes to a dot center and is given the drug during the first 4 weeks and then there are 4 months and thereafter he goes back so we have achieved ambitious targets in tuberculosis control we have another landmark has been uh, those who are aware of step wells in rajasthan and a certain part of the country guinea worm used to be a cause of huge mortality we were declared guinea worm free on 15th february 2000 primarily by abolition of step wells and uh, extensive use of temifos leprosy prevalence has been reduced and yaws has been eliminated the strategy of uh, giving 100% coverage to mothers against tetanus has reduced uh, neonatal tetanus uh, we are strengthening institutional delivery the aim is 100% institutional delivery 
and though diseases came on hitting us like avian flu influenza h1n1 plague etc but because of a robust public health system and a robust surveillance policy we were not hit hard we have also had focused action in other health spheres the vertical health programs which were independent have been finally merged under the national health mission and we are trying to consolidate the gains our uh, public health system is now functional accountable to the community we have rig rigorous monitoring against in integrators and we have decentralization and most importantly the anganwadi worker scheme is a clear is a clear uh, example of widespread community participation in public health rntcp yes we have achieved a large amount of the mdg targets but uh, there is more to be done i must be honest this is one area where we need to focus in the next few years so that tb does not remain a public health problem malaria deaths definitely declined a lot and as far as the national aids control program we were the country which ensured that the anti retroviral therapy costs come down significantly so it's accessible to all and we provided art therapy to each and every needy individual and now hiv aids is being considered like any other disease and not necessarily a death warrant immunization is another success story it is unrivaled i must say smallpox to polio to covid 19 childhood immunization mission indradhanush you name it the data on the right side will tell you how we have achieved a lot of immunization yes adult immunization is an area which now has to be focused ahead uh, of course we have done it with covid 19 we could look at other diseases and very important is we are now the vaccine provider producer exporter to the world and done it with scalable technological solutions like the even and the covin platforms with other countries want to adopt and our pragmatic know how the policy polio legacy planning is a role model for covid vaccine planning and for other countries to emulate as regards non communicable diseases control yes but it is bound to happen once you increase the life expectancy of a community which we have from an abysmal some 27 30 or to now we are almost touching 75 80 the life expectancy of an indian you are bound to have a definite increase in diseases which come in the twilight of one's life cancer diseases cardiovascular disease and stroke so uh, we were up to it and we launched a national program in 2010 looking at screening and early diagnosis capacity building database through surveillance under ayushman bharat they are included in our health and wellness center and for renal failure patients the pradhan mantri national dialysis program has been implemented in a large number of districts we are now thinking and doing so integration of ayush with yoga as an integral part of ncd control strategy while our planning in the ncd aspect is doing very well but considering the huge population uh, that we have uh, being the second largest populous in the world this is one area wherein the future planners of public health need to focus so that uh, the youngsters are protected from this disease by adopting healthy lifestyles capacity building i was a part of this project of standard treatment guidelines by the ministry of health and wellbeing welfare and uh, the uh, health secretary inaugurated this at afmc where when we produced guidelines for clinical conditions the our guidelines were on the nhm website for quite some time and on the who website of course now it has been updated by a large number of other friends from all institutions uh the indian public health standards have come up and released in 2012 a landmark pradhan mantri swasth suraksha swasth suraksha yojana to correct regional imbalances in availability of tertiary health care 
and of course uh, we don't want aims like institutions only be restricted to delhi so a large number of aims are being coming up and as i see 22 are going to come up by 2025 150000 health and wellness centers and uh, the pradhan mantri ayushman bharat health infrastructure recently launched is a huge initiative to fill gaps in public health infrastructure especially in critical care facilities and primary care in both urban and rural areas food security i mean many of you might have seen that infamous bengal famine painting where a dog and a man are fighting for a loaf of bread we were in that state ladies and gentlemen pre independence era and the world thought that when the britishers left us we will not be able to provide food security to our country but they but uh, they did not know the ingenuity of the indian public and famines are history we have gone in and why i talk about food is because if people are provided food if people have enough food then infectious diseases will not take a foothold so uh, this is linked to democracy and a free press which always encourages and points out gaps and of course uh, uh, we have a pds regardless of its drawbacks the public distribution system has seen us through better drought forecasting mechanisms and of course uh, the famous green revolution and coupled with this the famous white revolution the amul model where in india become a milk surplus state today from a famine country we have surplus food gain production and we are a net exporter of food the national food security act 2013 some targeted reforms in pds and now we have our own food safety and standards authority of india which is ensuring provision of safe wholesome and hygienic food and it is also looking at obesity in uh, our children who are in the higher age group so uh, fsc has given the world globally benchmarked standards and practices social security and health insurance scheme uh, the factories act 1948 was laid down as a preventive measure to protect the health of the workers in the organized sector uh, the bhopal gas tragedy taught us some lessons and brought out the lacuna in the factories act and so major amendments were made in the 90s uh which help the workers uh the esi act yes the employee state insurance act is the largest so social security scheme in southeast asia taking care of the health and the social security needs of a health worker and esi is now rated as the largest uh, <coughs> uh revenue they have so much of money as far as the labor ministry is concerned and they have used it gainfully by ensuring that a laborer's or a worker's son gets admission in the numerous medical colleges that the esi corporation has set up so not only are they providing health care and social security they are also taking care of the next generation the pradhan mantri jan arogya yojana ayushman bharat flagship to achieve universal health coverage it is known as the world's largest health assurance scheme fully financed by the government and cashless access aims to mitigate catastrophe expenditure on medical treatment something i'll come to tomorrow the idea is essentially to reduce out of pocket expenses of the indian which today are quite a lot of course the cghs the esis and of course now gradually you will hardly find any middle income Uh, a lot of our middle income families are gradually taking up private health insurance uh, to take care of them uh, in their future there have been a large number of landmark health legislation and india has had the guts and the vision to benefit the maternity benefit act of 1961 the mtp act i have already mentioned and subsequently amendments to the mtp act have recently taken place based on varying varying judgments of the honorable supreme court of india the pcpndt act to ensure that uh, uh, our sex ratio is not distorted as it is and of course the protection of women from domestic violence act uh, the consumer protection act 
the mental health care act 2017 remove things like lunatics asylum something which discriminated among those who had poor mental health in fact the mental health care act calls out people of depression and others to seek help to seek help so that they are treated they are counseled in time we have the very robust biomedical waste management guidelines to protect our environment and of course the national food security act and the fsac act these are the some of the landmark health legislation which our country has taken to protect public health we have also consolidated gains and harnessed technology there is political commitment to provide universal health coverage we have leveraged digital health and emerging artificial intelligence tools we have refined strategies for accountable and service delivery focus on one health and health all policies the swachh bharat abhiyan has been actually a social revolution and a people's movement for sanitation and we have focused on a large number of such interventions but but uh, there is more work to do and we cannot actually afford to sit down on our laurels and while we have achieved a lot there's a lot that has to be done going forward yoga of course we are all aware it's more than just postures breathing and meditation uh, stress and depression have become silent killers so as hypertension yoga offers a solution and even standard textbooks of medicine today advocate yoga as a solution which the world has given them and the prime minister's initiative are bringing a good new course the ministry of ayush is hailed as having guinness book of world records and now the, the un general assembly has said that 21st june is the international day of the yoga so we have harnessed a lot of what our rishis and our munis have done and got, taken it beyond religion yoga is not a measurable phenomena we need to trust validate and we definitely need more clinical trials to explore the benefits of yoga the research so far and the empirical evidence shows that there is a great potential in yoga and i'm sure large number of you hearing me would be practicing it and would be feeling better swachh bharat abhiyan an initiative of the prime minister cleanliness and decreased open air defecation reduces fecal oral diseases uh 2014 this was launched to eliminate open defecation in fact those days people used to say that the railways is the largest open defecator now we have bio toilets in the railways so it is a restructured version and aims to achieve open defecation free india salient features of the swachh bharat abhiyan we have built a large number of toilets rural household coverage is increased and 70% of the households have a toilet in 2018 considering the massive size of the country i think it's huge and we need to cover the balance 30% so this is of course helped and i'm sure we would be reaping benefits by reduction in diarrhea malaria and improving child and health nutrition and uh, the message has been conveyed that savings from a household toilet exceeds the cost to the household ultimately a snapshot of india's health system performance at present we have a very many of our indicators indicate a very strong performance as i said life expectancy has increased to 70 years which was 58 in 1990 and only 41 in 1960 under 5 mortality is 37 per 1000 life births and we are on track to attain the target of 25 set by the sdgs by 2030 our infant under 5 and maternal mortality are very close to the global average for india's income level our tfr that is the total fertility rate is 2.3 mind you replacement levels of 2fr is 2.1 which means a static population we are almost there so uh, that that generally shows that the family planning program is moving forward is doing well and certain states like the southern states have shown even tfr rates which are below replacement levels uh, we have to uh, i'm sure that with the public participation we should achieve 2.1 pan india we have huge gains in skilled birth attendance yes institutional deliveries have gone up a lot there's hardly any delivery which takes place at home and of course immunization however there are certain points which necessitate our action 
what worries me a lot is that the under 5 mortality for girls is greater than boys we have tried this uh, <clears throat> beti padhao beti bachao beti padhao and all that uh, uh, all these important uh, things that we are doing they are very very important but this is an area which we need to focus there is no it just doesn't make sense that uh, we lose more girls than boys there has to be a social change the girl child has to be welcomed to the house as is a boy and once she is catered for i think this skewed ratio will improve as i said the non communicable diseases account for the largest share of disease burden uh, excepted for a population which is now uh, got a higher life expectancy we have the highest tb burden in the world this is a little worrying and a large number of this is you know because a large number of private sector mismanagement led to drug resistance drugs which are not supposed to given in the first stage which are given in third stage have been used and we have ended up with some cases of mdr and xdr tuberculosis uh, which i think we need to look into to ensure that uh, we bring tb under control and of course uh, you know what our road conditions are unfortunately a young of young number of young lives are lost due to road traffic injuries which is absolutely non acceptable we need to look at road traffic injuries not only from the treatment perspective but from the prevention perspective also of course I, our population age structures offers offers both opportunities and uh, challenges we have uh, a very good worker to dependent ratio which is going to be favorable 2.1 by 2050 as you know some of the countries have an aging population and we don't have that so we have the demographic dividend investments and children and adolescents definitely need to be done for better health nutrition cognition and productivity the government is seized of the matter we will also have an aging population coming up elderly parents grandparents so we got to focus on chronic diseases ncd management and very important social security the common risk factors continue obesity especially in the well off population climate change we all know floods you seen floods across the country the el nino phenomena urbanization has its challenges where forests are cut and of course air pollution we are in delhi the parali season is on and we yesterday had diwali so i mean we have to look at how to sort of control air pollution so that we don't have asthmatics and we live a long life and we are all aware covid also air pollution contributes negatively these are solutions which can't come only from the health ministry side it has to be an intersectoral approach and i'm sure everybody is sitting down and looking at it and requires widespread community participation healthcare market obviously offers vast potential we'll have a huge healthcare market by 2022 because of rising incomes and access to health resources we need to leverage industry strengths to provide good preventive care we have a very huge pool of highly skilled health manpower i mean the indian doctors are considered the best doctors in the world there's no doubt about it our doctors are running a large number of health systems abroad and very popular but what concerns us still is that the doctor patient ratio is a decimal especially in rural areas and nurse patient ratio a lot of ideation has been done as to how to improve it in the peripheral areas uh, solutions are there uh, we need to look at this very closely so that our doctor patient and nurse patient ratio especially in rural areas increases though ayush is being integrated slowly and surely into the permanent system but i suppose we need to speed it up so that the value of uh, ayush and ayush complements modern medicine or allopathy and both go hand in hand digitization in health data collection has of course got a huge transformative potential and uh, we are looking into it of course covid caused a lot of disruptions uh, because of population size uh, we had the second highest disease burden globally but the good part is if you see the right side a case per million population is extremely low so that's a good sign very importantly we have delivered 1 billion vaccine doses and counting and this is a huge huge achievement in a very very short time we have had two indigenous vaccinations been developed 
and for a developing country i think the scientists need to be complimented uh, we have had uh, socio economic impact nobody has been spared worldwide but yet green shoots of recovery are visible divisive government intervention to implement to implement lockdown uh, allowed us to scale up allowed up to come up to the people's expectations of course uh, we lost lives in the first and second wave uh, and uh, that is unfortunate but i'm sure we we lived up to the challenges and uh, uh, the covid response of the government and the atmanirbhar nirbhar bharat report we hardly we, we were importing ppes now we are producing indigenously disinfectants we have no dearth drugs we have no dearth ventilators and of course we are now in the position to export vaccines so you know a lot of our industry a lot of our health workers uh, took covid 19 as a challenge and came out of it with flying colors of course any pandemic has its adverse incidents and economic impact obviously is going to be huge it has been huge worldwide and we were not spared uh, many of sectors of course education tourism hospitality trade suffered i especially the children's education and online classes and all of course we did but children need to go out and play they need to meet their friends man is a social animal and a lot of uh, mental health issues come up when you are confined to your homes so this is of course suffered but then as you can see uh, everybody all forecasts are saying that despite a devastating impact our economy has recovered very fast we are showing a v shaped recovery and that shows the resilience of the average indian we are looking at how to get a better health system for the 21st century first let's focus on health financing yes this is an area of concern uh, 60% the literature says is financed by out of pocket payment which is these people are paying out of their pockets and while for the wealthy there is no problem but it is a major risk factor for people becoming poor so who recommends that it should be only 20% we are around 60% so that's a gap which we need to cover and that can be covered i'm sure by the government's infrastructure push on health the idea is that uh, those who need the public health system most should get it and get it free and this will help us in achieving our targets of universal health coverage so this is an area which all health professionals have to sit down their minds to see how we can achieve this who target of reducing the out of pocket expenditure of our people also spending more is not sufficient we need to spend better we have to have inform reforms in budget execution service delivery right balance between flexibility and control uh, we have to allocate from states to districts for better reflect better population need shift to demand side financing modalities in alignment with the advanced health systems like the pmj tb program are already pushing this agenda reduce fragmentation of health protection schemes avoid duplication essentially pro poor focus of health financing better service delivery and public health investments now coming to service delivery elements there has to be an open source federal system in place but can be improved many critical areas cannot have an all india standard approach in a country where a language changes every say 200 300 kilometers and the diversity of our population uh, the approach should reflect local characteristics prefer preferences and capacity of governance concern we need to give autonomy for local and urban governments non state providers the ngos have a major role to play especially at the primary care level demand side financing agenda versus continued supply side approach should can vary Uh, government of india can be an enabler for open source approach good provisioning of medical research clinical protocol data systems financing via centrally sponsored schemes set accountability mechanism with states linked to central scheme and finally promoter promote knowledge transfer platforms finally public health we have to strengthen core public health functions 
because it's very very clear if we if we prevent disease the curative bill will be less institutional reforms and any innovations in vertical disease programs like tuberculosis hiv and reproductive child health the private sector engagement for tb diagnosis and treatment performance based incentive to states public health cadres to execute core public health functions production of global public goods yes we have done wonderfully in new vaccines medicines and diagnostics and we need to leverage this not only to get uh, valuable foreign currency but also to boost the image of the country multi sector response to tackle certain social determinants of health like clean water and sanitation as i said we've achieved a lot but still uh, we should not rest until the last man gets clean water and sanitation mitigate air pollution yes this is a gray area especially in our urban urban setups our cities have a lot of air pollution in it and this is an area where we need we need to put our heads down of course we already have very important institutions for disaster preparedness diagnostics investigation response and population health for example if you see orissa the ndma the state disaster management authorities a number of cyclones they have been hit by but at every time the response was great so if you are prepared with the uh, advance uh, monitoring uh, by the forecast of uh, forecast of cyclones and other disasters i'm sure we would be in a better position to handle the numerous uh, disasters that we get by ndm considering the fact that we have an ocean and we get a, we are have, we have a country which have which are prone to cyclones we had a tsunami we are an earthquake Uh, certain places high seismic zones could get earthquakes so definitely this kind of stockpiling is necessary icmr of course took the lead in uh, covid uh, thing covid uh, diagnostics and planning and these are the, some of the areas which i'm sure icmr would be scaling further similarly the ncdc in delhi is looking at all these things and it is going to provide stewardship for disease surveillance to summarize India has made good progress on key health indicators but there is a scope of improvement in other areas covid-19 gave us an opportunity to critically analyze our health systems and plug gaps besides step up indigenous medicine and vaccine production outstanding challenges related to disease control demographic transition and quality of care has to be considered there has to be better health financing essentially government financing and privatization prioritization of health in state budgets we need to increase our expend a percentage of the gdp on health allocation has to be increased uh, so that more and more money is spent in public health better service delivery we have to give ingredients not recipes for service delivery public private mix with robust public option multiple service delivery transitions must have and of course government of india has always has a important role to play in this innovations are to be nurtured and they are being nurtured of course better public health response we've already strengthened surveillance and public health capacity at district level including zoonotic disease in fact when plague came back to india some sometime back the surat plague that was a wake up call for us to strengthen surveillance and public health capacity at district level and now the integrated disease surveillance program is in vogue and it's a very good program prepare national and state institutions to effectively respond for pandemics and promote institutional reforms and innovations in vertical disease control programs key messages India's health system as i had brought out in the last half an hour has made significant progress in global perspective on many indicators we have come a long way but we can't sleep we have miles to go there are health gaps that need bridging more investment in preventive and public health quality of care and improvement of urban health a health good robust public health system for the 21st century is the need of the hour the government of india is seized of the matter and planning towards that the niti aayog is on the job we need more government financing to prioritization of health in state budgets health financing reforms to spend better 
a new approach to interfiscal relations for health service delivery reforms wherein one size cannot fit all so there has to be an open source federal model to empower states to chart their own path leveraging technology and innovation major challenge ahead to build primary care foundation and address the load of non communicable diseases finally investment in core public health functions for disease control including institutional strengthening and coordination for pandemic response ladies and gentlemen as you have seen over a period of time we have come a very very long way in this 100 years this inter pandemic period there has been india from a country which had famines which was scourged with infection large populations were wiped out had no drinking water sanitation was a problem etc etc from there we have come a long way to increase our life expectancy and a large credit for this uh, goes to building up good public health capacity but as i said we cannot rest on our laurels uh, every day there are new new challenges coming up covid is just there we have had two waves hopefully we shouldn't have the third wave at least i uh, i mean i would like to hope that way as an epidemiologist uh when the vaccination program picking up and uh, the zero survey is now telling almost 90% of the population is having the immunity hopefully <clears throat> the worst is over but uh, we can't we have to continue surveillance and look at future challenges thank you very much and i quote uh, evert who says healthcare is vital to all of all of us some of the time but public health is vital to all of us all of the time uh, these are the data of acknowledgments of the sources from which i picked up data for preparing this presentation i would like to thank lefn kalayon gupta phd scholar at aims new delhi just just going as faculty member to the armed forces medical college pune and one fine nursing officer of mine lieutenant rabia agniotri who helped me through this presentation thank you very much ladies and gentlemen